Have you ever imagined that a simple mixture of cement and washing powder could reveal a result that seems impossible? What if I told you that this secret has always been right before our eyes and nobody noticed? Today I'm going to show you step-by-step step a surprising technique that combines science, construction, and homemade innovation. And in the end, you'll see a result that truly defies traditional logic. First step, separate approximately 50 grams of laundry detergent into a container. Nothing too complicated so far, right? But keep this safe. This ingredient will be added at the right time and completely change the behavior of our mixture. Now let's prepare our special equipment. Here I have a paint mixer, and for this experiment, I'm going to make an improvised adaptation that will boost its efficiency. I'm going to wrap steel wool around the spiral, increasing friction and the contact area with the water. Then I'll secure this steel wool with nylon cable ties, keeping everything firm and without movement during use. This simple modification intensifies turbulence, mixes much faster, and incorporates air extremely efficiently. And you'll understand why when we get to the transformation that follows. Leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. Write your city and country. It's fascinating to see how far this content can reach, to discover who's part of this huge community, and it inspires me to produce videos that are increasingly tailored for you, wherever you are in the world. Notice how our approach combines practical engineering with homemade chemical lab tricks. And when I attach this adapter to the drill chuck, you'll understand where I'm going with this, because that's when the full power of the tool begins to reveal the true purpose of this modification. Now let's move on to the main materials. Five liters of clean water, seven kilos of common cement, one kilos of construction plaster. And I'll also set aside approximately 50 grams of chopped fiberglass. This material is discreet, almost goes unnoticed, but it plays such an important role that it can completely change the behavior of our mixture. For now, I'll just set it aside. At the end of the video, you'll discover exactly why this component is essential in this project and how it directly influences the final result. Before mixing anything, let's prepare the molds. Here I have a wooden mold measuring 50 cm long, 20 cm wide, and 10 cm high. Inside, I apply used motor oil as a release agent. Yes, motor oil. A practical and common trick in makeshift construction projects. It prevents the concrete from sticking and makes demolding easier with a cleaner finish. If you prefer, you can apply a release agent, but this is entirely optional. Any product or device with a similar function will also work. Used oil, vegetable oil, industrial release agent, or even homemade solutions. The goal is the same, to reduce the adhesion of the concrete to the mold and facilitate demolding with a cleaner and more uniform finish. In this experiment, I will use three different molds, each prepared with the same care, but with small variations that will directly influence the behavior of the mixture. Throughout the process, you will notice how seemingly simple details can alter the texture, finish, and even the final strength. And when we get to the end of the video, I'll show you each piece completely finished, side by side, so you can clearly understand the differences, the real advantages of this technique, and why so many professionals are testing this alternative method. Now it's time to begin the real experiment. To start the main mixture, I add 5 liters of clean water to a large basin with a capacity of 40 liters. This step may seem simple, but it's here that we begin to control the correct proportion of materials and ensure that the entire process runs smoothly and precisely. Next, I add 50 milliliters of plasticizing additive. Now let's begin the most intriguing part of the process, creating a mixture that will completely change the behavior of our project. In a 30 liter bucket, I add two liters of clean water and then add the powdered soap that we set aside at the beginning. Now comes the adapted mixer. Observe the high mechanical agitation. The intense movement causes the surfactant molecules in the soap to reduce the surface tension of the water. This generates micelles, 
small molecular structures that trap air, forming a dense and stable foam. The greater the agitation, the greater the formation of bubbles. This principle is used in industrial cleaning, chemical foams, insulating materials, and even lightweight construction. Here we are reproducing this phenomenon, but adapted for a home laboratory. Now start adding the seven kiyot of cement little by little to the water that already contains the plasticizer. As you pour the material, notice how the mixture begins to gain consistency and body, creating the structural base of our experiment. Use a mortar mixer because it ensures a much more efficient mix. With this equipment, you avoid the formation of lumps, improve the hydration of the particles, and achieve a truly homogeneous paste with a uniform texture and ready to receive the next components of the experiment. When the mixture achieves a truly uniform texture, it's time to add the chopped fiberglass. This material acts as an extremely efficient structural reinforcement. It increases the internal strength of the mass, reduces the formation of micro cracks, and significantly improves the mechanical integrity of the design, especially during curing. Now we come to the most critical moment of the entire process, incorporating the foam. Here I have approximately 30 liters of dense foam, specially created to give lightness and controlled volume to the mixture. And pay close attention to this detail, because it makes all the difference in the final result. Mix quickly. We're capturing the bubbles within the cement paste to create a cellular micro-concrete. After that, add one kilos of plaster and mix again quickly. The plaster not only accelerates curing, but also increases the initial rigidity of the mixture, creating a firmer structure in the first few minutes. This process requires maximum speed because the plaster begins to react immediately, altering the viscosity of the mass and reducing the time available to work with it before it begins to harden. With the mixture fully prepared, begin pouring the material into the wooden mold. Immediately, you will notice that the texture is completely different from traditional concrete. The mixture is more aerated, visibly lighter, but still maintains a surprisingly firm and stable consistency. What we have here is, in fact, a structural foamed concrete made in an artisanal way, using simple yet extremely efficient principles. Remember, the ideal time for complete curing is 28 days to achieve maximum performance. But for this experiment, I will conduct the first tests after 48 hours, analyzing initial resistance, density, and surface behavior. These initial assessments already reveal a lot about the potential of this technique. Let's recap the function of each component. Cement acts as a structural matrix and base of resistance gypsum, accelerates curing, reduces density, and improves initial stiffness. Fiberglass provides structural reinforcement, crack control, and greater stability plasticizer, increases workability, reduces excess water, and improves final performance powdered soap, responsible for generating the stable foam that allows the formation of homemade cellular concrete. This technique already has industrial versions, but here we show how to adapt it with accessible materials, intelligent manual engineering, and a carefully controlled process to guarantee consistent results. Now that the pieces are molded, let's let them cure. After 48 hours of curing, the first of three tests in this experiment begins. The focus here is to analyze a hollow structural brick produced with a mixture of cement and powdered soap. A hollow brick made with regular concrete typically weighs between eight and nine kilograms. With this alternative formula, the final weight is surprisingly reduced significantly and completely unexpectedly. The weight dropped impressively. 
On the scale in real time, the brick shows a reduction of approximately 60%, a result that is completely out of the ordinary and already indicates the potential of this technique. Now it's time to test the second mold of this experiment. Here I have a mold in the shape of a plant pot, already completely cured. I'm going to unmold it and show an unusual test, capable of opening up several ideas for future projects. The purpose of this test is to evaluate the extreme lightness of this mixture. For this, I have a basin of water here. I'm going to position the mold on the surface and observe it floats. This behavior is not common in pieces made with traditional concrete and reveals how this formula with cement and washing powder can generate innovative materials for decoration, gardening, crafts, and even experimental applications. It's time for the final test, using the wooden mold. To make demolding easier, I'll unscrew one of the sides of the mold and release the brick more precisely. Even with only 48 hours of curing, it is already possible to perceive the initial resistance of this mixture. Although ideally, a complete curing time of 28 days is needed for the foamed concrete to reach its full performance, the early result already demonstrates that we are dealing with a truly innovative composition. If you're not already subscribed, now's the time. Subscribe now and stay up to date with all the news and exclusive tips. This way you won't miss any new videos and you'll also support the channel so we can bring you even more quality content. Click the subscribe button and become part of this community. Now I'm going to test one of the most striking characteristics of this cellular concrete, something that simply doesn't exist in regular concrete. Using a handsaw, I'm going to cut the brick in half. Notice how easily the cut happens without damaging the teeth of the tool, indicating that the material is still damp inside, but has a firm structure on the outside. This behavior confirms the potential of this type of concrete for applications where lightness, workability, and insulation are crucial characteristics. After analyzing the three models presented in this experiment, it becomes clear that foamed concrete opens up possibilities for solutions that go far beyond the conventional. And here's a question for you. What kind of piece, creation, or project do you imagine we could develop using this lightweight and versatile foamed concrete? Leave your idea in the comments. It could inspire new experiments here. Thank you for following along this far. See you later.